It's 25 past one. You're watching the first hour of the Monday edition of the Midday View on ANCA DSTV Channel 403. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, this story, the South African Reserve Bank is celebrating 100 years of its existence. Now, over the years, the bank has had to manage various challenges. It has also had to adjust the way it handles the monetary system in order to deal with the changing financial landscape. The Deputy Governor, Cuban Naidu, is joining us now to discuss uh, the achievements and, of course, challenges of the Reserve Bank today. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Naidu. Welcome to the Media View. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. I guess congratulations are in order. I mean, not many institutions around have been uh, uh, were established 100 years ago are still fully operational today. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayani, and uh, thank you for those congratulatory messages. Uh, indeed, it is a major milestone. Not many institutions survive 100 years. Yeah. How has the central bank carried its mandate over this time? The mandate has changed considerably over 100 years. When it was founded, its mandate was essentially to ensure order in the issuance of notes and coins. Um, gradually, that mandate has changed a, a little if not dramatically, uh, but today the mandate is enshrined in the Constitution. Uh, the central bank is only independent since the 1996 Constitution. It was not independent before that. Um, we also now have a financial stability mandate in addition to the price stability mandate uh, that was given to us in the Constitution. So that mandate has gradually changed, evolved over time as times have changed. Yeah, now, now ups and downs, if you look back, which would have been the most challenging period, in your view, of, of, of the bank's existence? Is it in post-democratic South Africa, or is it due apartheid South Africa? It's hard to say, but let me outline some of the more turbulent periods. The Great Depression, 1929, uh, 1931, uh, the attempt to go, or when countries went off the gold standard, uh, managing the Second World War and the debt dynamics that that introduced, uh, the introduction of the South African Rand in 1961, uh, sanctions and significant capital outflows in the 1970s and 80s, the debt standstill agree, uh, arrangement in 1985 uh, after Bertha's Rubicon speech when international creditors uh, effectively froze South Africa out of capital markets, uh, we've had two banking crises in South Africa, one in 1985-86 and one in 1998-2002. to 2002. In both episodes, about 17 banks each uh, went under or were bought or were acquired. Uh, the RAND crash of 1998 and then again 2001. Um, the introduction of inflation targeting has been a highlight for us, managing the global financial crisis and more recently the COVID crisis. Um, which, which Those have been some of the highlights. Yeah, and, 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 and the intervention by the central bank in this COVID-19 times, if I may say so, has been quite extraordinary. Is this an indication of the role of central banks in these times uh, uh, that it can actually broaden uh, uh, its, its role and look more to ways of assisting uh, in, in ailing economies? I think central banks are perfectly designed to manage crises and to help governments at, in time of crisis. Um, there are very few institutions with the weaponry, with the armory, with the arsenal, with the tools that a central bank has and can deploy it during a crisis. Of course, you have to be select about the deployment of those tools. Overuse will result in them being redundant. Um, and we did deploy those tools. We lowered interest rates to its lowest level in 54 years. Um, we introduced liquidity, massive amounts of liquidity into the market. We bought government bonds for probably the first time in, 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 in at least 20 years. Uh, we changed banking sector regulation to help banks to continue to lend. And we literally did all of that in March, April. <laughs> uh, almost all of that in March, April. Um, that's pretty, yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty historic. That's pretty historic and pretty significant. Does it mean this is really how the bank, the Reserve Bank, should be managing its, 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 its role into the future? Because 
This pandemic, uh, if we are to be frank, Mr. Naidu, is going to be with us for several years. In general, central banks are what I call sort of the last line of defense. They're a little bit like uh, the goalkeeper, Brian Baloyo, Itumalem Kune. We, we're a bit like the last man standing. So we play a fairly special role when you're under pressure. Our job is not to score goals. Somebody else's job it is to score goals. But in a crisis, when you are under pressure, central banks come into play. And that's when you see their strength and their importance as an institution to the country. Yeah, I see you chose the Kaiser Chiefs players now that they've qualified for the CAF, for the CAF finals of the, Ch the CAF Champions League final. Uh, okay, let's not talk about football now. To, to, end, uh, to end our conversation, uh, 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 Mr. Naidu, thank you very much for your time. Um, just another important point that has come up recently in South Africa about the role of the Reserve Bank or its nature, nationalization of the Reserve Bank. What's the latest thinking, very briefly, in the central bank about this? And would nationalization do us any good? Nationalization is not something we discuss inside the central bank. It should be discussed by government. If government would like to nationalize the central bank, it's up to government. Uh, the financial commitment will be on government side. Our view is that it would make no difference to the mandate. It would make no difference to the operations. Um, in an ideal world, we probably wouldn't want private shareholders. And maybe if we had to draft the found the bank again, uh, we, would, we wouldn't have private shareholders. However, we do have private shareholders. They play a fairly minimal role in policy, no role in policy, a fairly minimal role uh, in general. But they play a positive role in governance, in ensuring that we are honest and safe and, uh, and run well. So our view is that it's not worth the effort. Uh, you get very little real gain if you get rid of the shareholders, uh, and there's some cost. And that cost is for government. Given the priorities that government has, we think that there are better priorities to worry about. Mr. Kube Naidu, Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of the Republic of South Africa, thank you very much for your time. And once again, congratulations to the Central Bank for 100 years of existence. And keep it safe, keep safe. You yourselves do take care.